She is the perfect, I gotta work it. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today I am going to share with you some things that I still buy or use that are plastic or that are disposable and generally that are just no good. This is one of the most frequently asked questions I've gotten, especially in real life. This is one of the things that I end up answering the most during Q&As and there is a good reason for that because I use a term called zero waste which sort of implies that there is absolutely no waste in my life and of course that's not true because you cannot be totally zero waste, especially not in a society not designed for it. So in order to sort of put some of these misconceptions about sustainable living down, I thought I wanted to show my dirty, dirty garbage. <laughs> we are going to talk about some of the things that I either use or buy or have in my life that is not ideal to give you guys a more realistic idea of what sustainable living actually looks like because I think that is just as important as talking about why those disposables are bad. But before we get started, this video has a sponsor. Da, 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 da. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Thank you so much for being here, Skillshare. I don't know what I would do without you. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different courses. You can learn literally everything. I don't know if you noticed. You have definitely noticed if you follow me on Instagram. But a couple of months ago, I took up drawing and painting and there's literally no stopping me at this point and Skillshare has been such a great tool in that process. I found this course called Daily Practices to improve your drawing skills and it's so good. So I use Skillshare quite a lot in the sense that I draw inspiration aha, from many of these really talented artists and I try to interpret these methods and techniques in my own way. So if you are interested in learning anything new or expanding on things you already know, Skillshare is definitely the place for you. The first thousand people to use the link in my bio will also get a free trial Skillshare premium membership. And by the way, the standard Skillshare membership is $10 a month with the annual subscription. Okay, now let's get into the video. The first thing that I have on this list is plastic gloves from the supermarket. So the way that I get most of my bread when I don't bake it myself, and honestly, I don't always have time for that. So I love that my supermarkets have these bake-off sections where nothing is packaged and you can sort of put it in your own bag. But in order to get it from the bake-off section and into your own bag, you need to use a glove right now. Previously, you could use like a little tool, but all the tools have been replaced with gloves due to a global pandemic which I also understand but instead of throwing those gloves away instantly because I didn't touch anything but the bread I'm going to eat they're completely okay I put them in my pocket or in my bag and not that long ago Jens and I were at a bulk section where there were tons of sweets but we didn't want to use their plastic bags and we didn't have a reusable bag with us so we just used the glove and put like three or four small treats in the glove and that was perfect. I also sometimes use them to pick up Molly's poops when I can't scoop them into a bush or something. So they would have been thrown away either way and I was mandated to use them so I try to use them as many times as I can before I have to discard them. I have like three in my bag right now. The next one is crisps. This is a rare treat in our household because they cannot really be found without plastic which is super annoying. I have made tortilla chips myself but like it's not necessarily the same as potato chips and every time I made them they just turn out really bad and I no, so I just stopped trying. I often substitute crisps for popcorn because I can get popcorn kernels in bulk. If I am to choose a bag of crisps, the more conventional kind of packaging is a mix of metal and plastic, which cannot be recycled because we don't have the facility to take those materials apart again. It's sort of the same thing with plastic and cardboard and ca plastic and paper. You cannot really in Denmark take those materials apart, so they cannot be recycled and they have to go with the, the trash that we burn. But recently a couple of brands have launched uh, bags where there aren't any metal so they're just 100% recyclable plastic so they can go in a recycling bin. And it's not an amazing thing. It's like the bare minimum <laughs> that this company can do. In Denmark I think the recycling rate is between 20 and 30% for plastic. Um, in some regions it's much lower in Denmark but that's sort of the average that I've seen the most places uh, and the global average for recycling plastic is about 9% so it's a little bit better but it's so not ideal anyway and you cannot really recycle plastic without also adding virgin plastic to the mix. So it's not ideal but if I am to choose a bag of crisps and I do not have the homemade option available um, I will choose one that is 100% plastic rather than something that is completely unrecyclable. 
Number three is all the plastic crap related to getting a tattoo. There is a lot of plastic related to getting a tattoo. From all the plastic that the machine is wrapped in, to the plastic that holds the ink, to the plastic on like the bench or the chair in which you sit, to the gloves that a tattoo artist wears. Now they also have to wear aprons and masks and there's so much plastic related to getting a tattoo. And I see more and more artists, which is pretty cool, opting for bioplastic options. And I have an entire video about bioplastic and sort of the impact of bioplastic and how it's a little bit better, but it's not like 100% ideal because it often reacts in the same way as plastic and it's often completely unrecyclable because there aren't a lot of bioplastic recycling facilities available to most people yet. So watch that video if you're super interested in the bioplastic issue. A thing that I usually do to sort of minimize the impact of this plastic is to not go and get small tattoos done all the time. Right now we're also in a lockdown so I can't get any and honestly maybe that's for the better. <laughs> I sort of save up during the year and then I go and I put more hours in and I get all the stuff done I want in one go because they use the same amount of plastic for a small tattoo as a big tattoo so or many small tattoos <laughs> so i usually go in and i have several things done and i'm there for an entire day so that is simply what i do instead it's not completely perfect but at least i'm not generating this amount of trash over and over again all the time so that is something to consider not an ideal choice but art really matters a lot to me and especially tattoos have helped me so much so it's not something i'm willing to give up the next one is takeout containers, especially during lockdown where we haven't been able to go to restaurants. Jens and I have both prioritized supporting our favorite vegan places here in Olberg. So we have sort of, I don't want to say ignored because we haven't ignored, but we have sort of made plastic the secondary issue when it comes to takeout because it's been more important to us to keep these businesses alive because there aren't a lot of vegan options in Olberg. So it's been really important to us that those options will continue to be available and I feel like that is a bigger impact than the plastic they come in. There's also the thing that packaging actually only accounts for a rather small part of a product's overall impact and the ingredients usually account for a lot more. And I think I got this question on Instagram not so long ago and I think I've mentioned it a couple of times but it's still more sustainable to buy a vegan product in plastic rather than buying a product with animal products without plastic, especially if it's produced with factory farming. The previous video from this one is about factory farming and the environmental impact and history of factory farming, so go and give that a watch if you're more interested about that. But takeout containers have been one of those categories of waste that we have kind of increased, especially during this year and much of last year as well because it's important to us to keep our sustainable businesses alive. I do, however, when I order from takeout places, always specify in a comment or a note, something like that, that if they can wrap it without a plastic bag, that would be really appreciated. That I don't need cutlery or dressings or anything like that. And usually I never get it as well, so that is also some types of waste that was avoided. And kind of in context of this, I wanted to add single-use napkins or disposable napkins, because I usually get so many of them whenever I order takeout. Even if I specify that I don't need any of these disposables, I usually get napkins still. And instead of just throwing them away, I save them in my kitchen drawer and I use them for all kinds of bits and bobs, specifically when I do watercolor. We don't have kitchen towels, we use cloths instead. Um, but disposable napkins are really great for like drying up my brushes and mixing things. And I really like using disposable napkins for that purpose and they would have been thrown away either way. I also save them whenever I am at a restaurant. You, If I used it or if I haven't used it, I still take it home because when they set a new table, they will always throw away this disposable napkins from the last round. I think it's illegal not to. Um, so if I am at a restaurant and there are disposables there and they are on my plate or near my plate or something that I potentially have touched, I will take it home with me and find a use for it because otherwise it will just be wasted, worn or not. Number six is some plastic bottles. This takes a little bit of an explanation but I think it's worth mentioning especially in terms of recycling and being like perfectly zero waste 
all of these things. So, so in Denmark and I know in other countries as well, I just have the primary experience from my own country, but we have a bottle and can tin return system, which means that you pay a little bit extra for beverages in packaging and then you get those money back when you return the packaging and that goes for plastic bottles, glass bottles and aluminium cans. The return system then either washes the packaging and then sends it right back out or recycles it into new packaging. But the thing is, this all happens separate from the national recycling facilities and like the regional recycling facilities as well. This is a, a like entire company of its own and their recycling rate is much higher than the normal conventional recycling rate. When we have had parties, rip, <laughs> when we've had parties in the past, we would buy bottles ideally in glass but not always sometimes in plastic as well and then simply return the bottles and they would be used again the recycling rate is higher which is something that i do appreciate i do however definitely prefer buying glass bottles because they are usually simply just washed which i think is pretty cool most aluminium cans actually have a small layer of plastic on the inside but the priority list goes glass aluminium plastic number seven is medicine and supplements this is something that is almost impossible to get without some kind of disposable packaging and the thing that I have opted for is not individually wrapped medicine and supplements but instead like a little jar where the jar is made of plastic but it's definitely much better than having everything be individually wrapped but sometimes there's really no other option so I just really wanted to add that you should never feel bad about taking medicine because it's wrapped in plastic never ever ever in a million years should you feel bad about going into surgery about becoming healthier about having chronic illnesses because guess what those things are really kind of out of our hands a little bit and Again, this is one of those times where it's definitely impossible to be completely zero waste in a society not designed for it because, aha, this is not really something that consumers can do a whole lot about. I know there are different kinds of options, but generally this is all just me saying, don't feel bad if you have to take medicine to not be in pain or to feel good or, or to be healthy or be stable. Don't feel bad about it. Generally don't feel bad about using any kind of plastic if you have a disability and that piece of plastic will improve your life quality because you are amazing and you do not deserve to feel bad for wanting to exist like everyone else. I really only take one kind of supplement which is a B12 supplement and it does come in plastic, luckily not individually wrapped. If that was the only option for me I would also not feel bad about that. I also sometimes take like small painkillers for menstrual cramps and they come in a glass jar which is pretty neato. Number eight is nylon stockings. This is something that I've had a really tough time giving up. I know you can get cotton stockings but I feel like nylon stockings have a different vibe. I feel like they're super elegant. I love using them. I have however I stopped buying them and I haven't bought them in the longest time because what I do instead is that I get them from thrift shops. Every time I am in a thrift shop, I find nylon stockings that are often sometimes completely unused, still in the packaging, and for a fraction of the price as well. <laughs> I sound like a commercial now, that was really my intention. But I don't buy them from new, I buy them from thrift shops, but that of course does not really change the fact that they're still nylon, aka a synthetic material, aka plastic and whenever you wash synthetic materials they will release microplastic a laundry load of synthetic fibers can release up to 20 million pieces of microplastic so i am a gross boy that try to wash my synthetics as little as possible i put them in the freezer because sometimes that helps with like foul smells and like if they're not actually dirty but just smells a little bit you can put them in the freezer or i spot wash quite a lot um simply just to avoid putting them in the washing machine all too much i also don't necessarily wash a lot of my clothes after just one day uh, other than underwear you can easily wear the same socks for more days like I didn't have hair to do that, but I feel like you got the point anyway. The next one is toothbrush bristles. I have had a lot of trouble saying that today, but even if you have sustainable toothbrushes like something that's made out of bamboo or wood, the bristles will most likely still be made from nylon, aka plastic. And I also still have a toothbrush that has these plastic components. What I do when I upcycle the toothbrush handle <laughs> is that I pull out the brush part and then I put the br like the bristles I put them in a container that I then throw away it could be cardboard with like grease on it it 
can be basically anything but simply just putting the bristles in your bin will not necessarily be ideal because they will fly away as soon as they're in contact with air and just pollute just everywhere we, we don't want that so when I do throw them away I make sure that they are sealed tight inside something so they don't end up in nature and number 10 is nori sheets not that nori sheets contain plastic but I have yet to find an option for nori sheets that do not come in plastic or that are not packaged in plastic and nori sheets contain tons of nutrients like calcium and copper and iron magnesium manganese and phosphorus and potassium and selenium and zinc and so much more and it's kind of recommended that if you live a vegan lifestyle if you eat plant-based that you incorporate nori sheets and seaweed into your diet so seaweed is something that i incorporate into my routine especially in the form of sushi yeehaw but if you know any place where you can get like nori sheets without this amount of plastic i am all ears i would really love to know i i guess the point of this video was that there's plenty of ways to reduce waste there's plenty of ways in which to be zero waste but that doesn't mean that you have to give up everything especially not things that keeps you alive things that keeps you healthy there are so many places where you can start your sustainable journey and slowly and gradually work your way throughout into your entire lifestyle. But there are also things that are really, really hard to find completely without plastic and it's okay to settle once in a while. This is not all on the consumers. It's not all consumers' fault that we cannot get certain things without plastic. 71% of all global emissions are caused by the same 100 companies, most of which are related to fossil fuels, aka the industry that also produces plastic. So just know that if you do your darn bestest, that is also definitely good enough. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you liked it. I hope it was helpful. Let me know down below if there are things that you can definitely not find without plastic. Things that you just really need help for. I am all there for you. And also just help me with my things, please. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!